Hey guys, it's Figs. Now today we're gonna to be talking about something a little bit different. We're getting ready to expand a bunch of the pastures on the farm. We're not gonna be talking about farm. We're not gonna be talking about farm animals today. Even though all the animals are about 50 feet away from me right there, Bella and Chewy are sitting there staring at me thinking I'm gonna be sitting here getting them some food. That's not what we're gonna be talking about today. Today we're gonna to be talking about one specific type of unique plant. It's a very specialized plant. It's actually an orchid. And the plant is actually right beside me here. This beautiful little plant here, it grows all over my fields. It's just here all over the place. It is actually a protected plant. It is Cypripedium parviflorum, and this is variety pubescens. This is a subspecies of parviflorum. It's a species that has a lot of discussion about it. It is a gorgeous lady slipper orchid. Now these ones are almost done. They're kind of midway, so you see some of the stuff. They're starting to degrade already. They might have already been pollinated. It's a very, very unique plant. It grows up in the middle of my pasture of mixed grasses and stuff. It's a pretty cool little orchid. If anybody's ever kept orchids, they often know about the, slip, the tropical slip orchids. But this actual orchid grows native all across every province in Canada and almost every state in the U.S. Yes, every state. There are species of Cypripedium that grow all the way up into Alaska that actually will start sprouting through the ground while there's still snow on the ground. There's actually 58 species of Cypripedium in the world and they're all in the northern hemisphere right across the top. They're everywhere. But in Manitoba, we actually have 37 species, not of Cypripedium, but of orchid. And most people wouldn't think of that. So today, we're gonna to talk about one in particular. Cypripedium parviflorum variety pubescens is also known as the greater yellow lady slipper. In my yard, and I'm actually in my neighbor's yard in, my, in his feed lot, they are all over the place in the ditches, which I'll show you in a moment. But this is the greater one. It's characterized as the flower shape on these is irregular. You can see that the, the, the petals and the sepals are very, very different structure. It's got this, this, this characteristic, what we call the slipper aspect, okay? It's a yellow pouch. It's shaped with a lower lip. It's about two inches in size and it's V-shaped. There's insects inside it. The column and the rim of the mouth are often characterized by reddish spots. You can see the reddish spots and stuff that are in there. The narrow, uh, the petals and the sepals often have these lines. Now there's a lot of variation in this flower Basically, it's due primarily to the different types of soils that it can grow. This plant, as I said, is, is in almost every single state and it's right across Canada and it's very, very prevalent. It lives in basically every type of habitat. My type of habitat that where it flourishes in my property is open grassland. The ground itself is actually very, very calciferous. There's a lot of limestone in the, in the, in the ground and also a fair bit of salts. So it's established to be able to be extremely adaptable. And that's also the ones that you'll see it often gets a lot of these different striations in the sepals and petals. That way you'll often see them in where they'll grow in, in more of a mossy bog type or a, a more uh, acidic type environment. You'll see where they won't get as much of the striation. They'll often be bright, clear yellow. And they're just as striking and often people think it's a different species. It isn't. It's the same plant. It's extremely adaptable and very variable. Now, if we talk about the plant structure, it's a very, very unique plant. It's very, very obvious when it comes up and they actually come up very, very quickly. This today is actually Father's Day and this is actually the best weekend for observing this particular species as well as the small lady slipper, which is the variety Macassin. There's another one that looks almost identical, but it's a much smaller yellow pouch and it's a slightly smaller species. And then there's also, also the, the big uh, the white, the big white one with the pink pouch, which is Cypripedium reginae. I do not have them in my yard, but honestly, they're within 15, 20 minutes. I could go look at them if I wanted to. They're just as striking and they grow in the same type of habitat. Now, if we actually look at the plant and the structure of the plant, you'll notice that they have one, two, three, four, and another one here also still has four. They'll generally have between three and seven leaves. They alternate along the stem. They're generally oval in shape that come to a point. They have these very, very obvious uh, veination in them. It almost gives them an appearance that they're striped. And they've also got very, very small hairs that completely cover the leaves and the stems. And it's very, very difficult to see, but you might look in the video, it might look like as a bit of a shine because we're in the sunlight right now. 
but that is one of the factors about this plant. Now this particular cypripedium and actually all the cypripedium and actually all the orchids in Manitoba are all protected species. They all are, they are, and the reason for that is one, they have extremely, all orchids have extremely small seeds and they're very notoriously difficult to propagate artificially. So most people should just leave these things alone. Too often I see these things being hauled out of the wild by, you know, people want them because they love the flower, they're going digging up all the wild, and they bring it home without any thought about how to care for it at home. This one is a bit more adaptable. This is Cypripedium, like the, the variety that we've talked about, pubescence, and you can see it's here, it's there, just within about five, six feet of me, I've got about 10 mature plants that are in flower, but I also have many, many older growths that are also not yet in flower that are with them as well. So if you look at this clump that's right here, I have a mature one that's in flower here. I have one here that's here. I have one that the flower was coming, something stopped it from coming, but that's three nice mature growths. I got poison ivy directly beside it. And then I have another mature plant right beside it as well with an immature growth coming up that'll flower next year. They're fairly long lived plants if they're left alone. However, in Manitoba, we have, as I mentioned, 37 species. I think we have, it's only a handful of Cypripedium species, and I can't even think of them off the top of my head. We got this one, we got the small yellow, we have the big white and pinks, we have a diminutive white, we have the ram's head, and as far as I know off the top of my head, without fact checking it, I think that's all the lady slippers we have. However, the pink one, known as Cypripedium macaulay, or the moccasin flower, is extremely specialized in regards to the environment it needs. Cypripedia macaulay is one that is extremely specialized in its environment. It only lives in very specific conditions and needs an extremely acidic environment and most people cannot replicate the environment properly. It also needs that bacteria that lives within the soil or the substrate that it grows with to be actually adhere to the roots and actually let it thrive. You cannot provide a lot of these things properly in, in your garden at home. So best leave them alone, leave them out there. As you can see, that's my house in the distance there. We're actually here just in my neighbor's feedlot and I'm literally on the side of my road. So right here on the side of my road, they're all over the place. I don't know if you guys can even see them, but I've got two right here and I'm gonna flip the camera around. I'm just gonna give you an idea of the density of them here on the ditch in the side of my road. All right, here we go. One, two, three, four. Also some mature clumps there, no flowers. There's one coming without a flower right now, new flower coming. Some nice several growths here, here. Okay, that's one spot, there's more back there. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. <laughs> <laughs> now look at them here. Look at how prevalent they are over here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven in the trees. Eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. Now there's something cool. I never saw it before because I had them in the different spots. But this is the greater, obvious. There's the lesser. And this is the only group of lessers that I've seen that haven't shriveled up. So again, greater, lesser, much difference in size. This is a much smaller orchid. These ones normally last, uh, I'm sorry, they actually come out about a week or two before the giants and they don't last as long. Don't know why, here's one that's doubly flowered. But you see the variation just in some of the ones I've shown you already. These ones have a lot more yellow to the sepals and the petals. But they are absolutely everywhere here. Now this, as I say, this is right directly beside my, uh, beside my property. It's just the farmer's feedlot, so nobody's ever in here. So I'm on the other side now of where we were filming before. There's another one. There's another one of the small ones, which I'm happy to see. And there's another big one over there. 
and then there's two big ones here so they're all throughout here and just because i'm wandering through here and wearing literally an ankle socks uh, i'm probably going to be absolutely rampant in poison ivy for next week so that's going to be something looking forward to while i'm on the road but hope you guys enjoyed this little expose eh, into this absolutely wonderful plant you know me I've, I've kept orchids for many 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 years they never cease to amaze me i find them absolutely fascinating i think they always will fascinate me the sheer diversity the incredible shapes and colors I think they're absolutely wonderful. So, if I can tell you one thing, it's just enjoy them, enjoy them where they are, leave them where they belong, leave them for generations to enjoy. And if you leave them alone, they'll come back year after year and you get more and more and more of them. These species, however, are all available in Canada and in the US through a lot of different commercial growers. So there are a lot of growers that have started taking on the challenge of actually providing this species available for people to buy as a perennial for their gardens. So please ethically do that instead of constantly taking them out of the wild. There's a reason this species is protected is because it's very, very challenging. So thanks as always for watching, guys. Take care.